Hello, everyone. Welcome back. We're here with another episode of Poll on the Call. This is episode number 15. And my name is Mandy Mack. I am Chris Rivers. And we are and, here. <laughs> yes. And this episode is all about training for a poll competition, which is something that the two of us really, really love doing. And a lot of our students love doing. And the poll community loves doing. And if you don't love doing it, maybe this episode will convince you. <laughs> I believe specifically Emily, if I'm not mistaken, asked for it on Instagram. So definitely want to shout that out. If I miss, I don't, no, I'm pretty sure it was Emily. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yes, I am excited. This is definitely something we love to do. I am more new to it. So Mandy has more experience to share with you. But um, I have learned a lot with training for a competition, so I'm happy to share my experience as well. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so um, where do you want to start with it? Do you want me to, to start with my experiences? or? Um, I guess, do we want to start with our experiences or the difference between an amateur and a professional competition? Oh, yeah, I guess we can, we can go over that because there are different types of competitions. And I think that that is a good thing to bring up too, because a lot of people, when I say, hey, you should do a poll competition, they look at me like, what? <laughs> and they don't realize that um, there are amateur competitions and it's not just like the pros doing these things. So um, you can do it at any level. Um, and even as a beginner, like as long as you love being on stage and you love um, showing what you love, then there's a, a place on the stage for you. Uh, yeah, but there's different amateur competitions and probably the, the biggest well-known one is Pulse Sport Organization. Um, and they really are amazing and they give a uh, platform to everyone, um, young and old and, and everywhere in between and every level. Um, and that's the one that Chris and I uh, did re most recently. <laughs> yeah. Um, and they also um, do virtual and in person, which is awesome. Um, but you've done more PSO. I'm positive you've done more PSO than me. <laughs> I've done a few. Yeah, I've done both in person and online. I'm glad you brought that up too, because there's also different um, options for a competition. If you're afraid to go on the stage in front of everyone, you can definitely do one of the virtual competitions where you just send in a video. Although it does feel a lot like the, the actual competition, you get like the, the I call it poopy tummy. <laughs> like even when you're just by yourself videotaping your routine um, just to get it right for the competition. But I guess it's normal. Um, that's just part of it. Um, but we'll talk a little bit more about poopy tummy and <laughs> the things you can do to train for your competition to, to help it. Um, be the best time ever because it really should be fun and amazing. <laughs> um, I definitely agree with that. Um, yeah, when I started training for my competition, it started not being fun and I started hating pole. So I had to kind of, like you said, start making it fun. So I didn't end up hating what I loved. <laughs> um, but back to the PSO, um, they do go based on, and I don't think PSO is the only, only one, but other competitions, not only do they go based on the amateur and pro, but they also will divide like the amateur based on your level, level one through goodness, level one through four, one through five, and then also your style, which is also pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. So there's really competitions for everyone. And like when I talk to some people who are not in the like the pole world to be like, oh, I do pole competitions. They'll look at me like I'm this like crazy competitive person, but like, it's really, um, it's fun. I mean, there are some people who are really in it, you know, really competitive, but I think for the most part, you do need to have the mindset of it being fun um, or else it just becomes too serious and everything's on the line. <laughs> but yeah, there's different styles. There's something for everyone. Um, whether you like dancing sexy, whether you like doing floor work, uh, whether you like doing lots of tricks. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, and do you, I guess, want to talk about your 
experience with because I know you have a lot of competitions varying from amateur and pro so definitely would you like to share that with everyone yeah um so the two main competitions that I've done were uh USPDF which is no longer active but and then PSO so I'll talk first about USPDF um they had a novice competition and the pro competition and yeah so the novice novice is amateur so I did novice level one and then novice level two the next time. And both times it was such an amazing experience. And really that competition was my favorite because it was um, more about like your performance um, on stage. And it wasn't like, like competitive, competitor <laughs> It was more like a show, like you were there. Um, I don't know, it was just like really cool and, um, yeah, and it was national, so everyone got together in New York, and you have to meet everyone from the around the United States, uh, and competing against you know awesome people that you maybe saw on Instagram. <laughs> but yeah, unfortunately, that that competition is no longer around. But if you look up some videos, look up USPDF. There's some really great old videos from amazing pollers like um, Laura Michaels and Brittany Pitlar and a um, bunch of everyone else. So, and me. <laughs> But let me talk now about um, PSO, which is still in existence and still amazing and wonderful. I started competing in 2015 and I was in level two and I did dramatic and it was my first time <laughs> on stage during pole and I was so nervous and like the pole was slippery and I slipped like twice down this pole. Um, and, but it was like an amazing experience and, I, and obviously I, I loved it and went back um, I think like four other times, four or five other times in person <laughs> at PSO and like two other times online. But um, the last last time was most special because I competed um, level five and I did the virtual competition and I was only competing against one other dancer and I ended up winning, which um, sent me to nationals in a... In, uh, Florida last year, which is so amazing. Um, but yeah, <laughs> which I ended up placing last, but um, somebody has to place last. It was just so amazing to be there. And um, it was like last because it was like, you know, nobody else. Um, if there was more people that competed in that level five, perhaps I wouldn't have gotten that spot, but it just goes to show you that you just need to do the thing and and uh, <laughs> you, you'll get there. But um, as far as like training for the, the different competitions, it was a learning experience um, and they were all different, um, especially the difference between the amateur and the pro competition. Because the amateur competition, you can decide like to take a break. But when I um, won the level five and got accepted into nationals, there was no breaks to be taken. <laughs> I had to just keep training and like developing that amazing routine that I was going to present at nationals. Um, so it was a lot on my body, um, a lot that I, that I hadn't really done before. Um, but I'll talk to you a little bit about how I <laughs> made it through it all. And these are things that I would recommend for anyone training, um, at, whether you're amateur or pro. Um, you wanna make sure that you are drinking a lot of water. Like number one, drink all of the water and no demand, um, or else you'll really start to feel it. Like um, hydration is probably the most important thing. And then the other most important thing as far as intake was protein. And I'm vegetarian and I am always like getting enough protein. But when I was training, I was not getting enough protein. I had to really um, increase that a lot more than I thought. Um, and then I realized because I've been training, you know, my competition piece over and over again, that I was um, getting my body in balance. So I had to go to the gym. And um, that really helped, you know, train me on my off days from pole and gave me a break from pole and also kept me um, balanced in between of my muscles and everything. And then the last thing is rest, which is probably like the hardest thing ever because you, you know, you want to get all your tricks and everything, but if you aren't giving your body enough time to recover, you're not um, going to get those tricks. Uh, and you're not going to get stamina through like that four minute piece <laughs> you have to do in front of everyone. Um, 
you know, at that time. But that's kind of a brief overview of my experience and like little small tidbits of things for <laughs> competition training that I learned um, of the differences between the amateur and the, the pro. And obviously if you are going pro too, like once you get to that, that level and like you continue, there might not be any breaks for you. So then you have to really think about, you know, taking better care of your body, maybe getting into the physical therapist that can just like, you know, check to make sure that you're doing everything um, in the most efficient ways for your body or else you can get injured later on. <laughs> yes, thank you so much for sharing all of that. <laughs> um, <laughs> You definitely gave us a lot to think about. Um, do you feel like your training style was like different between the amateur and pro? But when um, you were at amateur, I know you said you definitely had to change your diet and your nutrition. Um, but would you say you changed your style of training as well? Um, yeah, just a little bit, mostly because I was really intimidated by the fact that I was now, you know, at this pro level and I didn't feel like I was ready. And I think I self-sabotaged myself a little bit because I thought I had to do these certain tricks. And I was like really pushing myself to learn these certain tricks that didn't end up working out. And then, you know, um, I think so like a lot of it is the psychological um, thing of, you know, not psyching yourself out <laughs> about like, like I didn't feel like I belonged, but we should always feel like we belong wherever we end up. So that was a big part of it. But uh -huh. yeah, the, and like I said, the, the training between, there was no break, which was the biggest difference. Um, Cause usually when we do um, PSO Northeast, which is the one that we do here, it's a, a whole year in between that you can like think about and let it resonate with your body. But not if you get zoop sucked up into like the next thing, then you just have to keep going. Yeah. I'm sure it's like that for like world pole too. Like once you get you in past this certain level, you you go on to the next and you just keep going. <laughs> but like what a wonderful train ride to be on. <laughs> I love it. Um I will say my training experience with PSO was very different from when I was training with World Pole. And update to everyone. Um I missed the deadline, <laughs> so which was my fault. Um, but I mean, thinking about it, everything happens for a reason, and I feel like I could be more ready for it. But nevertheless, I learned a lot, which go gets me into the difference between training for freaking PSO and the world pole. PSO was how do I say it was my first one, so I really got in my head. So for a couple of weeks, I started hating it. Like I didn't want to do it. It was ridiculous. And then after a couple of talks with, I believe you and like Paulina and other people, I changed my outlook to start having fun with it, going training and having fun and just think of it, thinking of it like a performance and doing what I love because I love performing. It's really weird how a competition really just messes us up and changes our outlook on it. So then when I started training for World Pole, well, for PSO, I could be a little bit more lean back, I guess I could say. Not everybody is like that. <laughs> it's probably why a lot of people win all the time. <laughs> but for World Pole, it was definitely very different. I... Um, wanted to take it serious so i signed up for a life dance coach um which we interviewed in an earlier episode jamie wong um and it really helped me start to kind of organize my training and focus on what needed to be trained and where what i where i wanted to go and how i wanted to get there and um repetition became like everything <laughs> um pretty much always create a plan, have a plan with your goal set, what you want to do. And the plan has to include how you want to get there <laughs> and have a fallback for if you don't reach that goal, like a plan B, like say that goal is a specific trick move, have a plan B for an alternate of that plan move. Always have a plan for everything. 
And remember that plans are plans. You might not always be able to follow them. But repeat, repeat, repeat. Like start at the basics was key. I learned that my inverts were ass. <laughs> so um, I, especially on my left side and my shoulder mounts were even worse, especially on my left side and taking it up in the air, everything was just crap. So my life coach taught me start at the basics and then repeat. So that's pretty much what I did. I started repeating inverts over and over um, within limits, obviously, because you don't want to overtrain your body because too much repetition and you can, how do you say, overtrain the muscle. Um, so like a normal training session would be like a 10, 15 minute warm up of conditioning. And then I would do like six inverts three bent leg, three straight leg on each side, and then six shoulder mounts, three bent leg, three straight leg on each side, and then work on something else, like maybe a trick I was working on, and then go back to it and try it again, aerially, air in the air, aerially. <laughs> so repetition like that and really getting those basics and those basic spins because a lot of times we will focus on yes it's a competition i want to learn this move i want to add this but really a lot of people win just by bringing their basics and what they've mastered to the table um and that's what i learned in the difference between training for pso and world pole kind of really getting organized really mastering your basics and really just repeating in order to master those basics and not rush to jump to that cool move because you think that's going to win you the competition because it's not um but yeah that's my little take <laughs> <laughs> i love that you say that too because i um, I sat as a judge this past um, PSO Northeast, and that was my first time doing that. And I really realized on the other side how important the transitions are, the the spaces between the tricks, and how much that really like makes or breaks your piece or like turns it into either you know like a presentation of tricks or art. Um, and that's another thing you need to think about, you know, when you when you choose the competition is. Uh, am I more of an, an arty person or do I want to just show off my tricks? Um, and there's, there's a place for all of that. Um, but you don't want to like miscategorize yourself as all of us <laughs> we're, have been guilty of doing. Um, yes. Cause sometimes, you know, you think you, you are a dramatic type dancer and then um, you end up not being so much of that and that's fine. <laughs> um, but you know, wasting, time um, making a routine for a certain category and then finding out that you were miscategorized later is is upsetting rather than so we should think about that beforehand <laughs> before we get started but also like how do you know until you do it too you should always just give it a try um but as far as like i i like that you talked about you know like training the the different tricks and making sure that the basics are good because like, that's where you can really build off of them. And also like making sure, you know, cause it is, it does count in competition, those micro bends and the toes pointed, um, just really intentional lines that you're making with your body are important. Um, yeah. And then one thing we did not talk about yet was endurance, which is the thing that sneaks up on everyone because you, let's say you can do all the tricks in your routine. Um, let's say you love your routine and it's awesome, but you can't get through it because you're just out of breath because it is hard to do like a, even a two minute routine on the pole. So that would be one thing that you could think about um, ways to try to build up your endurance. One way that I liked to build up, I did not like this, I shouldn't say that. One way that was efficient for me to build up my endurance was those battle ropes at the gym, you know, the ones that go like this. And I would do it <laughs> first for a minute. Then when I was good, I did it for a minute and a half. And then I worked myself all the way up until the actual length of my routine. And I figured it would be good because it's like upper body and that's more of what we're doing. Um, and, you know, it built on my endurance. And then I was fine on stage doing my four minute routine. I was out of breath. 
and I was still smiling <laughs> during the whole thing. But yeah, if you're not um, good at endurance. Yeah, I'm glad you brought up that you were doing the rope thing because cross training is so important. And like you said, it helped you build your endurance. So add the cross training. I meant to say that <laughs> too. <laughs> right. There's so many things. And um, the thing I, uh, I tell our, our students who are competing too, because you don't really think about it, especially if you don't come from an athletic background or like sports or anything, but you're an athlete at this point, you're training like an athlete and you have to like, think about that in a, and get that mindset so that you can win like an athlete. (laughs) Facts. Like I, like while I was training for roller pole, some of my training sessions would go up to like three, four, one time even like five hours and I never did that for PSO and it wasn't all pole it was like an hour of yoga an hour of weight training an hour of pole and then another hour of yoga or something like that mm. yeah oh. and I'm glad you brought that up yeah like it should be all different things like never just like pull every single day um and and I do want to say like it's going to be different for everyone you're going to have to find your own perfect training schedule. I know for myself, I would do, um, I would have two days per week where I'd practice my routine and I would only do it for like two hours and I would get, you know, stop like that's it. Um, and toward the end when I was doing my full routine, I would only do my routine three times twice a week. And, and that was it. I couldn't do it any more than that. It was just too exhausting and it was too much for you to do that. Um, but yeah, I would say, you know, practice the, the pole. I would did it three times a week, two times a week. I'll be at the gym strength training. Um, also doing like active flexibility, mobility, and then rest <laughs> like full day of rest, maybe two days of rest. Yeah. Chris, what do you do for your training schedule? Uh, for my training schedule, I was, And I actually am trying to get back into it because I did take that week break. Um, And I actually did enjoy it. I love the benefits, but I'm going to try to be smarter if it. So my training schedule was four to five days a week. And it would consist of, how do you say, like active stretching every other day and then like um, passive stretching, like holding the stretch on the opposite days, like with some yin yoga, pole dancing every other day. I lied in the beginning, every other day. And then like the last three days, it was three days in a row, unfortunately. And then in between that (laughs) cross training with like calisthenics and other weight training programs and stuff like that. And I would try to do between two to four hours every day. Um, I wanted to do more, but, you know, we all have our lives. (laughs) Maybe next time I'll do more. (laughs) Right. I think that the the key is like, like doing enough and not doing more than that. Yeah. Because we maybe think like more practice would be good, but it's really detrimental and that's when you can get injured, um, doing too much of the repetitive. Oh, and then something you mentioned earlier, um, when, when we were pack, when you practice, like with your routine, um, you would take the tricks and you would practice them over and over again, but you would also practice them on the other side. I think you said that. Always that is important. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> because who is sitting there doing their routine on the other side like you're just doing your routine over and over and over again and like you might be pulverizing your one arm you know maybe you should consider equally pulverizing your other arm <laughs> and when you practice the other side I found you might find you're stronger in certain tricks than you are on the side you thought you might be yeah it like sneaks up on you yeah yeah and then you know what are some other things that we do during competition season i know i I would recommend like if you uh, have a studio where where you do competitions like link up with the other students 
that do competitions because there's a awesome camaraderie and also like keep yourselves like on track and like pumped about things. Um, like I said, also the psychological things that might happen during competition that the times when you might feel like you're not good enough um, when your friends are there to remind you that you are, of course, always good enough. Um, but yeah, all that stuff. Yes. Always have a plan, most importantly. Oh my gosh. And also like keep track of the deadlines. Yes. <laughs> Which I fucked up on that. I don't know how I messed that up. <laughs> so terrible. <laughs> we were so excited. <laughs> uh that's okay it was i'm so thankful for everything i learned and for everything i'm going to learn in the next year to prepare for next year yeah yeah and that's the thing though if you miss it like don't even worry like there's always another one also like if you compete and you don't place don't even worry just do it again like (laughs) as long as it's fun unless it's like really you know really stressful for you and it turned out being a bad experience then obviously don't do it but um, it should be fun. Yes, maybe try a showcase instead, like the post yeah, or, or <laughs> stick it to. Yeah, yeah. I was just about to mention that we forgot to say that the pole circus is another amazing competition. It was so much fun. And it was more like the US PDF where it was like more like a showcase and less like competitor y. I just made up that other word again. <laughs> have a summer one coming out so stay have look out for that <laughs> yes <laughs> this is super fun yeah but um i would really check out um pole sport organization like i said they're the the one that's most well known and they have regional and i think now worldwide again uh competitions and it's both in person and online yes i think they have an online one coming in may Taurus, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Uh, yes. And we're to to Liberty, maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we might be going to the Liberty one, most definitely, at least yes. to watch. Visit your post studio, let us know. <laughs> yes, yeah. If anyone else is doing a competition in the near future, let us know. We'll pump you up. Yeah, and if you ever want to be interviewed about your um, experiences as a competitor, too, we would love to hear your story. And it will always inspire other pollers to do the thing. We want to create a training program for all of you competitors. (laughs) That is a really good idea. Yeah, just especially for like new competitors, because it it is really overwhelming, especially if you choose to do it on your own and you don't have a support group in your studio. Um, Because we really take care of our students and we make sure that they are pretty supported during the whole thing. But yeah, it's overwhelming, the deadlines (laughs) and the... To be (laughs) determined. Yeah. I guess things we didn't talk about are like costumes. Um, (laughs) The main thing I want to say about costumes is make sure you practice in your costume. (laughs) Like multiple times. Because you don't know. <laughs> yeah, so you might fall out of your costume. Your costume might get stuck to the pole. Your costume might get stuck to the floor. Um, you know, your boot <laughs> might get stuck to your costume. These are all things that have happened to me. <laughs> yeah. OMG. And always also um, check the rules for the competition because I learned that they're all different. All the deadlines, all the rules, all the policies, even to like what they grade you on for points is all so make sure you read those guidelines so you're prepared for that specific competition yeah yeah and from your music selection too it might have to be a certain length it might um you know it might not be able to (laughs) contain swear words like you might have to find the clean version um you might have to edit your music world pull extra points if it's a song they've never heard before so things like that yeah (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you'll definitely That's read so interesting yeah yeah, yeah definitely you know what's in there mm. yeah and then I guess like think about after the competition like you can't anticipate how you're going to feel with the outcome of a competition but maybe think about 
I don't know, I, I would like imagine how I would feel winning. And then I would imagine how I would feel losing. And then so like when those things happen, I was more ready to like process them rather than being like, wow, I really expected that I was going to win. And then I didn't win. And then like my whole world was shattered, which might have happened to me at one point. (laughs) (laughs) I lost a lot. (laughs) Yes. And if you do lose and your world is shattered, we promise it will get better. You will move on. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I always say like it it really depends on your performance at that very moment in time. It doesn't have a reflection on how you are as a polar in the grand scheme of things. Like, um, you know, right before I won in competition, I literally fell in a hole and sprained my foot. So like at that point, <laughs> was I gonna win? Like, even though I prepared like so much, like there's just so many things that could happen, um, you know, right before you get on that stage that could ruin your plans but that doesn't mean you should not do it like it's still a wonderful experience and i do say like everyone who does compete like their pole training goes from like zero to a hundred like you become like this amazing pole dancer um just from training for that one one competition so yeah that's why i like it (laughs) it's the only way i progress (laughs) <laughs> just get in <laughs> some way to progress and train yeah <laughs> the only way I learn new tricks is to compete <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah we should talk about new tricks and competing though because you probably shouldn't put new tricks into your competition piece yeah, definitely not <laughs> yeah the tricks that should go in your competition piece are tricks that you can do like you know, without even thinking about them. Um, yeah, they should be comfortable. And I would say, like, I pick about, like, maybe three big tricks mm-hmm. per piece. And with yeah. good entrances and exits, and you got to hold them for a good amount of time. Yeah, yeah. And having, like, good eye contact, like, even on the spin pole. Cause sometimes you'll be on the spin pole and you would be like, <laughs> but you have to be like audience audience <laughs> <laughs> so true <laughs> yeah <laughs> things you don't think of if you've never been on stage before oh if you've never been on stage before before you do your first competition please do your competition piece in front of people because it's always a different experience like if you've just been doing it alone in the studio it's okay, but like doing it in front of people, it adds a little level of like heartbeat. <laughs> yeah. Oh, definitely so true. And if you're doing artistry, bang the story in their head so they understand. <laughs> right? <laughs> you want to understand your story. Sometimes you may feel like they will understand it because you understand it and you love it. And that's not always the case. You really have to put it at first grade level. Um, yeah yes <laughs> yeah yeah that's one thing that Chris and I both learned um yeah. uh, because we're we're both beautiful dancers and very expressive in our dancing but um the the face <laughs> and yeah. like I, it's not that we're not authentic in our dancing it's just that um the the way that you f- use your face and express it I guess in that way, um, in certain categories is very important. Yeah. (laughs) Right. Like we could be a really good performer and and like really like get everyone going in the audience, but still it wouldn't um, uh, matter for the judges because they were, they were judging on a different criteria. Yeah. So yeah. Make sure you don't schedule other big life changes during your competition training like don't buy a house or like <laughs> or like get married during your competition training or anything like that because the competition is going to be all encompassing of your life um, just for a little bit. That's why I was like when it's when it became like a chain reaction of competitions, it was a little bit more intense. Um, but it really does become a big part of your life. And then it can take you to different places. Yeah. 
<laughs> Best shape of your life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it gets you in really, really good shape too. Yes. <laughs> in competition shape. <laughs> Which I, which I kind of found um, is not sustainable. For me, um, it was not su a sustainable shape for me to be in. I, I prefer the break in between to like let my body catch up a little bit and then like bring it back um, into the training. Uh, everyone's different. Yeah. Yes. It's definitely hard to keep those muscles big. <laughs> 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 but yeah I, I i would say like if it's you know if you've never competed before and you and you just started pole and it, the idea is enticing to you you should definitely check out psl first of all and and check out pole circus if you want to do an online competition um yeah check out world pole as an awesome goal mr yeah, and there's all sorts of like sexy competitions. There's the um, Florida Pole Championship, Exotic Generation. Yeah, there's so many. <laughs> there, uh, there's also like regional um, like uh, competitions at strip clubs and stuff like that too. You can do, which are much different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, those usually have money. <laughs> it can win money otherwise you just win a medal <laughs> let's get into those yeah <laughs> oh actually i think pso if you won um if you won the overall you you got like a thousand dollars or something like that wow that's pretty cool yeah i was like wow i didn't know that <laughs> yeah there was some pretty cool perks of winning that <laughs> Yeah, I would say the um the last little bit of advice I, from me, um, in, as far as my experience, because I really got the imposter syndrome, um, going into nationals, especially like because you're you're competing on the same stage as Ashley Fox and all the other pullers in the world that you are in the United States <laughs> that you look up to, um, and you know they're just. Like you see them as like here and then you're here and you're like, oh my God, how am I in the same space? But like I said before, and this is advice I still try to give myself, <laughs> you belong wherever you end up. Like, so it's, it's, um, you know, you trained hard to get there. So as long as you, like I started at level two and then I got all the way up to pro. So that was kind of a, a big achievement for me. Um, and I, you really just, I just, just did the thing. <laughs> just kept doing it. So, yeah. And if it's something you love and you continue and try not to get that imposter syndrome um, and don't think you have to do all the big crazy tricks because you don't, you can just be yourself and do transitions. <laughs> yes. Love it. So true. Just enjoy the process and learn from it. Um, I really feel like training for world pole i learned so much um as opposed to like training for pso or even in the just last couple years like i really did learn a lot <laughs> and do you have any um like grand advice for anyone thinking about competing um it's okay to start from the beginning um again and i don't mean like go back to like your, an intro or a level one class again but i mean go back to practicing those chair spins those dips those attitude spins go back to practicing those jasmine knee hooks those choppers with the bent knees um because when you go back to it you can really pinpoint what you're doing wrong and fix it all and i found going back to it helped me learn the trickier and advanced stuff even better <laughs> yeah 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 that's so true too because you think about like contact points which was something i really didn't think about until like pso because you know you have to have a certain amount of contact points on the pole per level 
And I was like, oh, like picking and choosing these contact points. And then you'd be like, oh, it's easier in the Jasmine if I really get <laughs> to the contact point there. Yeah, yeah. And it makes you more precise in your movements for sure. Definitely yeah. don't. Um, I didn't, yeah. Definitely don't be afraid to go back to the basics. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, and even like um, the, the different levels like the level two at PSO, you can invert from the ground or you can descend into an invert. But my inverts looked like poo <laughs> by, by the time I was going to compete. So I chose to not invert at all. And it was still fine. And I, I ended up winning first place that time too, which was cool. Um, so it, it proved to me that you didn't have to do all the biggest, baddest tricks in that I should have listened to myself. <laughs> <laughs> years later older mandy knows <laughs> but yeah competitions are awesome and fun and i don't really have anything bad to say about them unless you take it too seriously then that's when it becomes problematic not just for you but for everyone else around you that had to witness the situation um yeah nobody likes a sore loser and in fact, no one's lo a loser. Um, Cause if you've ever been to a pole competition, you'll see like the audience and everyone is always so supportive of you. Like when you're on stage, everyone's just cheering you on. And I just feel like everyone who gets on that stage is a winner. Um, Cause it's hard to do. <laughs> yes. it's hard to get up on that stage. <laughs> but. I guess that's it for competitions and how to train for them. I know. Maybe we'll come out with a training guide in the future. Who yeah, knows? I think that's a good idea. Yeah. We'll, we'll see how our students can help us with that too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and if you have um, a, a competition team at your studio, you can share some tips and maybe some ways you guys all train together and we can put them together in a fun guide for everyone to compete. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, actually I know PSO has a few um, guides available on their, their website too. They do. Um, yeah. I bought yeah. They do provide a lot of resources. Yeah. I bought a couple of them. Some of them were like awesome. And then some of them were like, eh, I could have done without. <laughs> <laughs> well i guess it's for it's different for everyone too like some people might find them really helpful <laughs> yeah but yeah oh and i didn't talk about poopy tummy we should talk about this because um there uh there is a point where the the jitters like that you get before going on stage um some people have have a easy time like combating this like it's just a normal reaction when you go on stage. Uh, you know, you get nervous. You know, your palms might get sweaty, which is terrible in pole because you want to stick to the pole. Um, you might get poopy tummy like I get. Um, and I literally, like, it's so funny. I'll be like, oh, my gosh. Like, this might be TMI, but, like, it's, like, 10 times before you go on stage. I'm like, where is it all coming from? <laughs> but that might happen. But for some people, the, it might be really overwhelming. Um, the adrenaline of the situation might be really overwhelming. I've talked to a few students who have had this issue and there are, um, if you talk to your doctor, there are um, like, I guess, medicines that can help um, combat the, the super anxiety that you might feel so that you can get on stage and still do what you love. So if you are feeling like so overwhelmed that you can't even get on the stage, but you really want to do it, there could be a way um, that you could still do that. So um, that is a thing that could happen. Um, what other things that might happen before you get on stage? You forget your routine on the stage. <laughs> oh my gosh, that happens. That happened uh, to me. <laughs> let's go with it and freestyle. They don't know that you forgot your routine. They really don't. Unless like they can see it if you, sl if you stop. <laughs> but I definitely just keep going. Yeah, yeah. That's another thing about the adrenaline too. Like I always t say that it feels like I'm dancing on top of my music rather than like in the music. So if you feel like the adrenaline feeling makes you like go faster, 
just know that um, that's happening and like try to like breathe through it and get back into the music rather than on top of it. Um, yeah, that's all of those things. Like when I slipped the first time, like I, I slipped on the pole. I was doing this like cup grip spin and it went <laughs> and then I got up and I turned around and I like tried to do this other like reverse grab thing and slipped again. And then I just went into a split. Um, but then from there, from the split, I remembered maybe like another section that I could get into, but yeah, nobody, nobody knew that I messed up. I mean, you could see that I slipped, but like, nobody knew that I was like in trouble <laughs> in my inner turmoil. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then, um, I guess we can also just talk a little bit about, um, being, you know, supportive of others too. Like you might be competing against people um, who you're friends with. And this is always hard because um, you don't want to like, you know, outdo your friend or like the feeling of your friend outdoing you. Um, but always remember that you have your own unique gifts and talents and you're going to present your own, you know, uh, version of your piece that time and day on that, you know, that space. And it could be different from what you usually do. And um, it all depends on that. And it has nothing to do with who you are as a person or <laughs> your friends. Um, it doesn't mean that your friends are, you know, you know, I mean, they shouldn't hate you, but <laughs> you know, how do we deal with, how do we deal with that when you compete against your friend? Do you have any comments, Chris? Um, I mean, I would say just have fun. Just remember you're there for a competition and like you said, support each other. Um, all our dances are different. The judges are going to take them all differently. It doesn't mean that if your friend wins, they're better than you. Or if you win, you're better than your friend. It just means their dance was seen differently and judged differently than yours. <laughs> Yeah, I guess I want to say that because there was a time when Paulina and I, there was a few times that Paulina and I competed against each other. And there was one time specifically where um, another person had kind of like intervened, like with the two of us. And they had told me that they saw Paulina doing a box split in their piece and that I was also doing a box split in my piece. And then maybe I should like not do the box split because they were doing it. And then it got in my head and I was like all upset because like the box split was my jam and I was practicing it. And now I was like, this person said I should take it out. But like these people that try to get into your head like that are not your friends. <laughs> Don't listen to these people like do the box split. Um, even if you, you know, your box split look exactly the same as the other competitors, it's still not going to be the same um, in relativity to your piece and their piece. So yeah, don't let anyone else get in your head. Um, it shouldn't ever be like a competition. It should be friendship, camaraderie, and a celebration of your skills. Yeah. And Paulina and I are still amazing friends. And, we, <laughs> and while like, you know, one of us won, the other one won, you know, it didn't matter. We're still friends. <laughs> She's amazing. Yeah. Chris, what's up next for you um, in competition wise? I wanted to say PSO Taurus, but I don't even know when the deadline came. <laughs> you better find out. <laughs> I know. Um, I think that's your biggest obstacle, Chris. <laughs> uh, I'm so bad with dates. History was always my worst subject. I can't remember birthdays, anniversaries. <laughs> well, I got an anniversary of Rob tattooed on me. <laughs> me too. That's why I have. <laughs> Thank goodness, or else I forget to. <laughs> um, I would, but if not the if not PSO Taurus, which is the online one in May, then maybe Liberty. Yeah, <laughs> but definitely Northeast. Yeah, yeah, I definitely, I think I'm definitely gonna do Northeast too. Yes. Although I might stick to the the floor work. Yeah, I don't want to, I don't think I'm going to train too crazy because I think I really still want to focus on world pole, but 
now focus on it from a year perspective. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you can really plan on it and, you know, make sure you're you're really ready with a deadline. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> I grew yes. so much three months. I can't wait to see what happens in a year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. And that's that's the thing though. If you just you you put your mind to it and you train and you'll really see the differences. Like it happens real fast when you train for the competition. Yeah, it does. And you know, the, like things might happen during your competition training. Like one time, I was signed up for PSO. I was when they still had PSO in Stanford, and I tore my ACL, so mm-hmm. I had to drop out of that competition. Um, but I still, they gave me a ticket to attend, so I showed up in my crutches and watched <laughs> and watched everyone else. But um, you know, I still had a good time. Um, I but things say, might happen. I will say I'm aiming more for like performances and showcases, non-competitive, just like, just like pieces where I can just perform. So if you got something like that for us, let us know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that completely takes the stress out of any sort of like yeah. competition, like experience is sitting yeah. in a showcase. I think like after this next year of competing, I just kind of want to look for ways to perform and showcase rather than compete, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah. 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 Sounds good. <laughs> well, I think that's all I had for training for competition and being prepared and yeah. Yeah. There's so many just, <laughs> we'll try to to list the ones that we know underneath and then you know send us ones more that you know of and we'll add them to the list and yes we definitely will it's hard because i know some don't run anymore like i know mr pole hasn't run like in a year or two um uh, as the coronavirus so we definitely have to check yeah out. like who knows there's a bunch that haven't yeah and yeah. like uspdf i was really sad but it's okay. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. I know there's the American Pole Legion coming up in South Carolina in June. Um, and that will get you into national world pose if you compete ah. there. Um, but yeah. Nice. That's all I <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, I guess that's all we have for today. Yes. Um, we also have new products for you to enjoy yeah. on our website, our physics for pole dancers. Um, it's three workshops that you get, three 90-minute workshops that you get, and yeah. it, it pretty much teaching you mastering physics to help you master pole dancing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had these, um, the in-studio workshops. I think they were in, in studio. No, they were online and in studio last year um for physics for a pole dance and it was just applying all of the the <laughs> I can't think of it all of physics to how we use the pole and like the push and the pole momentum and, and everything and it just um like I'm not like a science person or anything but after doing this workshop I understand pulse so much more um and I, I can't really describe how I know it more but it like help me understand it for sure. Just learning all, all of the different um, things in physics and how they apply. So that we had the, like I said, the three videos and the slides. So all of that is available now um, for download and you get it forever. Yes. And the hypermobile, and we have a hypermobile for pole dancers or hypermobile. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's um, a hypermobile polar's guide to bending without breaking. And this was an idea that um, that we started at our studio just because a lot of us, and I'm sure you notice in your studio, have hypermobile joints, like elbows and knees that bend backwards. And we often wonder like, hey, is this the safest way for me to be um, using my body on the pole? And we had um, PT Cody Ibarra come in and give us a bunch of tips on um, ways you can, you know, notice hypermobility in your students or yourself 
and how to be safe in your training for longevity in your sport. So that that was another 90 minute video and it's available for download and you can get that forever too. Yeah. Really good for teachers and, and students as well. And then there's a yoga workshop too. Yes. Uh, two hour, uh, two hour, two video, two, one hour video. <laughs> Um, one focusing on back flexibility and the other focusing on lower body flexibility for your splits. And they are also, um, are relaxing and just kind of gentle yoga. It's, um, a lot of holding stretches and just kind of breathing and enjoying and relaxing while improving your flexibility for pole dancing. And you can get those forever and watch them whenever you like as well. Um, yeah, and those are great for your um, off pole training days, um, not only for competition training, but for just regular, like, especially too, if you've never done yoga before, like these are good um, to get you into yoga. And Chris is an amazing teacher. <laughs> um, but those are just some courses that um, Mandy and myself, well, mostly Mandy put together Um <laughs> And they are up for purchase and they will help you immensely with certain specific goals for pole dancing, um, whether it be flexibility or just improving spin pole, improving push and pull forces and centripetal force and all that crap. Yeah. <laughs> and like, if you're a science person, like these are great. <laughs> awesome. And we'll add that link in the bottom. You can also find those on our website. And we have also added free tutorials to our website. Um, you can find a shitload more um, on our YouTube, which there's a link to, but we decided to make some of them accessible for you too on our website, because why not? Everything else is on our website. <laughs> uh, and you can also sign up for our free intermediate pole dance course, which is also on the website too. Um, and you'll get it via email. So many cool things. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I know, so many cool things. We have a lot a lot of stuff coming too. Yes, yeah, y'all yeah. taking a break, but we was busy. We just weren't making yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much for listening and watching and commenting and let us letting us know how you like the episodes. It really means a lot to us. Um, yes. And we're so happy we get the opportunity to share um, our experiences with you and, and hope that we can bring, um, you know, more voices um, to you guys as well for just keeping in the uh, knowledge of poll and being inspired for the future. <laughs> yeah. I want to hear all your voices, not the dog voices that we just heard. <laughs> <laughs> um, you like dog voices too. Thank you so much for all your support. Look out in your emails. Today I just sent you um, all email subscribers a free intermediate poll course. So you don't even have to sign up for it. If you're an email subscriber, you got that today. And next week I will be sending out more free stuff for you because you know we want you all to reach your poll goals. And we want to make it easier for you because sometimes you just don't want to click the link to, to get the product. And we understand. So we'll send it to you. <laughs> You'll do get it. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. And if you have signed up to our email and haven't received anything, it might be in spam. So go to your spam folder and fix that. So it never happens again, but as always, thank you. And reach out if you want to see anything, any tutorials, any topic you want us to talk about, or if you want to be interviewed. Yeah. We have our Monday motivation, which we're always looking for uh, people to send in their motivational images and quotes um anything like that we'll post them on mondays and yeah. everyone loves them you'll always inspire others <laughs> yes thank you so much yes i guess that's it yes i guess we do our sign up <laughs> all right well i'm mandy mack and i am chris rivers and we are about <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes. like a butterfly. I love it. I just kicked it and now it's falling. <laughs> Too funny. I love my chair. All right.